Hi, today we're going to do a oil analysis. Uh, I've ordered the kits from Amsoil. I do the one with postage, which is the KITO2. So basically, the best way to do an oil analysis is to use a uh, pump like this. So we're going to attach this uh, sample bottle. It's a little 8 ounce bottle uh, to, and I, you clean that out, of course. Now we're going to use hose that protrudes through here. So as the oil fills the bottle, none of that oil is going to hit a possibly dirty pump, you know what I mean? So the the sample does not get contaminated. And this is the best way to pull a sample because number one, most people that are doing oil sampling don't want to drain the vehicle. They're continuing and they want to just see where it is uh, in the process. And number two, the most accurate sample is suspended oil. So just, I'm going to get everything set up, but just before I take the sample, I'm going to start the car again and uh, get some of the oil that might have uh, uh, separated or you know via gravity collapsed down to the pan I want to get it suspended again I've already got the car up to temperature uh, so that's kind of key too but uh, basically this is a lab that AMSO works with so oil analyzers let me show you the pictures the uh, forms here and the most difficult thing is not taking the sample as you'll see it's filling out these forms so, you know, I've got a past oil sample from a, a customer's van. I've got, this is kind of how they track it. It's all in color. It's very nice. They give you advice, you know, if you're going for extended intervals, especially if you have uh, a bypass kit, because, you know, you're just changing filters, not draining oil. Uh, but a lot of people just, they buy an unknown car and they want to see what the condition of the engine is. So a lot of it has to do with that, nothing to do with the oil at all. Uh, but the most difficult part really is filling out the form to make sure you know there's no mistakes. I mean, you want to make sure there's no mistakes because the lab will ask you if uh, if they're missing something, they they will uh, send you an email and let you know or put it on the analysis report and require you to call so they can run the sample again with that new information because it all plays into it. Your email is the most important thing because that's the only way they can get this back to you. Uh, but you'll, you'll want to identify whatever vehicle you're sampling as a particular unit and remember that unit so every time the name, the nomenclature of whatever unit you're using, so every time you send that sample in, you can uh, track it with subsequent samples, you know, a history, a histogram. Um, also, the time of the, the vehicle or the equipment and the time on the oil, because again, a lot of people aren't draining the oil, they're just changing filters or just pulling samples. And this isn't just for vehicles, it's for you know factory equipment. Uh, I went to a seminar years ago in, in uh, Cincinnati and they showed us that, uh, I mean, uh, money as far as maintenance and lubricants was in the uh, billions of dollars when they started using oil sampling uh, rather than scheduled maintenance. Uh, because not only were they able to catch things and save, you know, solve problems, but the cost of that scheduled maintenance uh, was two times what it would cost just to do oil analysis, especially if you run a fleet of vehicles. So, you know, that's the main purpose of it. But anyway, uh, this lab happens to be in uh, Indianapolis. So you get a bag to return it in. I usually tape this up quite nicely uh, so the form doesn't fall out of this little sleeve. And of course you paid for it. You get a uh, UPS return label which I'm lucky enough to have a, a what do you call it, a UPS Dropbox uh, right over here. So I'm going to start up the vehicle and we'll get this set up so you can just see how simple that is. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the hose to the length of the dipstick tube so that uh, I can reach the oil, you know, somewhat down below the, the top. So we're getting the suspended oil. And when you buy an analysis uh, pump from us, you also get hose that comes with it. Now this is replacement hose, so when I start cutting it, I mark the bag cut, but so I don't sell you one that I've already opened. But that's it, the G1571, so that you can order that uh, to, you know, if you're doing other people's cars and stuff, you do want to have enough of that on hand. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to pull that dipstick out of here and yeah, so we want to cut it so we have enough room to work with. So roughly that long and then enough to get into the, uh, the pump. So we'll just cut 
uh, this right here. Yeah, when you lay down that dipstick, make sure you don't short your battery, that's for sure. Luckily, this one has a cover on that. There we go. And then, uh, then you'll put this into the pump. So we're done with this. And this hose, you, you don't want it to get contaminated with anything because you, know, you never want to reuse it because it only takes a few microns of something to upset the sample. So that's very important. You have to use new hose every time. Okay, I'm going to pump the oil out now, but you want to make sure that one of the big keys is to make sure that that hose goes down uh, just, you can't really see it with the camera, I don't think, but there it is. You want to make sure it goes down enough so the oil is not going to splash around and, and hit the, uh, the pump, because if you're borrowing the pump, you don't know who used it last. But anyway, so we, you work down here. In some cars, you have to really work at getting the hose down there because there's uh, turns or other obstructions. So I just started and uh, got the engine or the oil all uh, suspended again. So there you go. Just I got lucky here. Sometimes it takes several pulls to find the top level of the oil. And this oil right here is actually uh, it's going to be an interesting sample. Look at that. Hardly any pressure. And there we are. I already got my sample. I uh, break the seal so the uh, oil returns back to the engine to, for less mess. That's it. That's as simple as it is. I'm going to grab the lid over here, take the bottle off. I actually have a plumber coming here today to tear up this concrete. So I didn't think I had 10 minutes to make this video and I got it done. So there's the sample and then on the instructions there's a, uh, a barcode that you'll attach to the uh, to the bottle and I wrap the bottle in paper towels before I put it in the bag because if there ever is a slight leak uh, you want it to get to the lab before UPS throws it away so that's really it I'm gonna put all that in there I already filled out my form uh, of course don't forget to put the dipstick back in and throw away this hose because you can't be reused so toss that in the trash and then lastly check your uh, oil level because you did pull eight ounces a lot of cars that just hold four quarts you know that's significant oil and also when you pull that sample and you replace it with fresh oil uh, that uh, that oil there is enough to replenish some of the detergents that you want in there I'll make a part two of this video when we get the sample back the story this is a Ford Focus that I bought used and uh, I had to make a quick trip the thing only had 20,000 miles or 26,000 and I didn't have time to get underneath it and pull the oil filter I couldn't get in the garage for one and the uh, you have to pull that skid plate off of there so what I did was I just used my little handy uh, vacuum pump and I pulled two quarts out I don't know what oil was in here some type of motorcraft product so I put two quarts of the OE just to get by because I felt more comfortable having some type of synthetic in there uh, mainly because I don't know who owned the car before I did and you don't know how they drove so there could be deposits well the, the, the very least I could do is spend five minutes just to pull two quarts out uh, it was actually about 1200 miles into the oil change but I want a product that well my sorry about that cut I ran out of memory there but anyway what I was saying is, uh, I just wanted to top off, I only had five minutes, so I pulled two quarts out, put two quarts in, because I wanted to know that I had a product that at least had powerful enough detergents to uh, sway anything, and, and you know, when you're an Amazon dealer, you want to start that process soon enough. But at the same time, I di also didn't want to drain the oil, uh, because I wanted to do this, uh, number one, I wanted to do this video, but I wanted to pull a sample at least partially what's in there now this test might be botched because I've got two oils mixed together but the Amsel product that's the nice thing about it it is compatible with anything I just wanted to put something in there that I was more confident with and then we'll still see even with a with half the sump uh, pulled out of there it takes four and a half quarts so I pulled out two uh, we'll still be able to see if there's a problem with this engine if there's any abuse uh, you'll still see something on the radar there, I'm, I'm certain. But again, it's a baseline test. 
and when I start doing subsequent uh, oil changes and samples, you know, the confidence level and the accuracy will improve. So there's a lot of reasons why people do oil sampling, but again, the best, uh, uh, the best time to do it is when you just bought a vehicle and you want to have a baseline. And those people up there at Oil Analyzers, they know every block, they have books and they can reference what wear rates are. You could have a lot of wear. You could pull a sample on a Cummins 5.9 and see extreme wear, but it's, it's according to the manufacturer, that's not extreme wear. That's just the nature of that block at a certain mileage. So that's why uh, Oil Analyzers are the best people to handle your analysis because they've got all that data that uh, goes back to about 1965 uh, as far as the source of these manufacturers go. So anyway, I just want to wrap this up. Thanks again for watching our videos. By the way, this Ford Focus is a very easy engine to add the uh, single bypass kit, at least the feed. It's right on the oil filter. There's a, the pressure unit is right there. And I'll just show you real quick, the back of the engine here, there's a huge void. You can mount just about anything, especially the Amsoil bypass filter. The only question I have to work on is find the return. I think there might be a small port on the block, you know, a low pressure source, or some type of modif modification that can be done on the cap. But I'll get back to you on that. And again, like always, if you enjoy these videos, hit the like and subscribe. It helps us small business people. Uh, also, if you do want to purchase the Amsoil products, uh, down below I will have a link that goes to the preferred section, preferred customer section. A lot of people just call me directly uh, it's the cheapest way to buy. Uh, I'm always here, usually Tuesday through Saturday. And if I could throw in a thing that we have. So anyway, I'll end right there and we'll see you next time.